Hi, this is chapter 19 of our novel The Enchanted Wood and this chapter is called Moonface Gets Into a Fix. The children went over to the hens that Joe had seen. They were lovely ones, but very peculiar colour, for their wings were pale green and the rest of their feathers were buttercup yellow. They had funny high voices and were very friendly indeed, for they came to press themselves against the children's legs like cats. Do you suppose Mother would like hens this colour? asked Joe doubtfully. I don't see why not, said Beth. I think they're very pretty. The thing is, do they lay good eggs? One of the hens at once laid an egg. It was large and quite an ordinary colour. Beth was pleased. There you are, she said. If they lay eggs as big as this one, Mother will be very pleased. How many hens are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I wonder how we can take them all. Oh, they'll follow for you, said Silky. Just like my clock follows me. Tell them you want them and they'll come. We want you to come with us, hens, said Joe at once. And the seven green-winged birds came over to him and lined up in a row to follow the children. It was really very funny. Well, that's our hens found said Beth, pleased. Now the, for the goat and the shovel. They wandered along looking at everything. It didn't matter what anyone wanted. They were sure to find it sooner or later. There were boats there, all kinds of dogs, shopping baskets, rings, toys, work baskets and even such small things as thimbles. It's the strangest land I ever saw, said Joe. We look pretty strange too, said Franny, giggling, as she looked round and saw the seven hens and the small clock paddling along behind them. Oh, look, there's the dearest, prettiest white goat I ever saw. Do let's take her. Sure enough, not far off was a lovely white nanny goat with soft brown eyes and perky ears. She looked quite ordinary except for two blue spots on her tail. Little white goat, come with us, cried Franny, and the goat trotted up at once. It took its place behind the hens but it didn't seem to like the clock, which bumped into it every now and again, just to tease it. Don't do that, clock, said Silky. Hope your clock won't be a nuisance, said Beth. I think it likes acting silly. Now for the garden shovel, said Joe, as he suddenly saw a fine, strong shovel standing up against the fence with some other garden tools. What about this one, girls? This looks strong enough for father, doesn't it? He took a hold of it and jabbed it into the ground. It was just the right sort. Joe put it over his shoulder and the four of them grinned happily at each other. We've got everything we want, said Joe. Come on, we'll go back to old Moonface and then we'll take some cakes to eat at home. So followed by the seven hens, the white goat and the clock and the four of them made their way back to where they had left Moonface. But he wasn't sitting where they had left him. He was pulling on a at a lovely rug which was hanging from a tree. It was perfectly round with a hole in the middle. Hello, hello, yelled Moonface as he saw them. Look what I've got, just what I've always wanted for my round tree room. A round rug with a hole in the middle where the slippery slip begins. Wonderful. But Moonface, you said you'd watch to see that the land of take what you want kept the faraway tree all right, didn't you? said Silky anxiously. Where is the hole that leads down to the tree? Oh, it's somewhere over there, said Moonface, draping the rug round him and staggering off. Come on, they're sure to find it. But they didn't. It had gone, for the land of take what you want had moved away from the faraway tree. Moonface, that's very bad of you, said Joe anxiously. You did promise. Moonface looked worried and pale. He hunted about for the hole, but there was no hole to be seen. He began to shake with fright. I've got got you all in terrible fix, he said in a trembling voice. Here we are, stuck in a land where everything we want, but the only thing we want is to get away. Everyone looked upset. This is just too bad. I feel cross with you, Moonface, said Joe in a stern voice. You said you'd keep guard and you didn't. I don't think you're so much of a friend. And I'm ashamed of you too, Moonface, said Silky, who had tears in her eyes. We'll find someone to help us, said Moonface gloomily. 
and they set off, followed by their hens, their goat and their clock, which kept striking four o'clock. Nobody knew why. But now they found a good, very curious thing. There didn't seem to be anyone at all in the land of Take What You Want. All the gnomes, the pixies and the elves had gone. They must have known the land was going to move off, said Moonface with a groan. And they've slipped down the ladder in time. Oh, why did I leave it? They wandered all over the land, which was not very large, but more crowded with things and animals than anywhere they had ever seen. I can't think what to do, said Silky. It's t true that there is everything here we want. We shan't starve, but it isn't the sort of place we want to live in forever. They walked here and there, and then, suddenly, they came to something they hadn't noticed before. It was a large and shining aeroplane, the kind that with open-topped so that you could see all round when you sat inside. Ooh, said Joe, eyes gleaming. Look at that. How I wish I could fly an aeroplane. Can you fly one, Moonface? Moonface shook his head. Silky shook hers too. That's no good then, said Joe with a sigh. I thought we might fly away from this land in the aeroplane. He climbed into the aeroplane and had a, go a good look around it. There were five handles there. One had a label on it that said up. Another had a label that said down. And a third one that had one that said straight on. And a fourth and fifth to the right and to the left. Joe stared at the handles in excitement. I believe I could fly this aeroplane, he said. I do believe I could. It looks quite easy. No, Joe, don't, said Beth in alarm. But Joe had pressed the handle labelled up. Before anyone could say another word, the shining aeroplane had risen upwards with Joe, leaving the others staring open-mouthed on the ground below. Now Joe's gone, said Franny, and burst into tears. The aeroplane rose up and up. It circled round when Joe pressed the handle labelled to the right. It flew straight on when he pressed the third handle, and it flew down when he pressed the down handle. It was just as easy as that. Joe flew neatly down to the ground and landed not far away from the others. They rushed to him, shouting and laughing. Joe, Joe, did you really just fly it yourself? Well, you saw me, said Joe, beaming at everyone and feeling tremendously proud. It's quite easy. Get in, everyone, and we'll fly off. Maybe we'll come to somewhere that Moonface knows if we fly long enough. They all got in. Beth packed the seven squawking hens at the back and sat the white goat on her knee. Then the shovel went on the floor. The clock made a nuisance of itself because it wouldn't stay where it was put, but kept climbing over everybody's feet to look out of the window. Silky began to wish she hadn't brought it. Ready? asked Joe, pressing the handle marked up. And up they went. What a lovely feeling it was. They really could help the feeling excited. Silky's clock got terribly excited too. It chimed 29 without stopping. I shan't wind you up tonight if you don't keep quiet, said Silky suddenly. And that finished the clock. It lay down in a corner and didn't say another ding or dong. Where are we off to, I wonder, said Beth. But nobody knew. And that's the end of chapter 19.